بارك فيك وسلم الحبيب جد الحقيقة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سيدات وسادة الحضور شرفنا في الجامعة التكنولوجية اليوم أن نستضيف أحد أبناء الجامعة التكنولوجية المتميزين جدا الحقيقة على المستوى العلمي العالمي متمثلا بالأستاذ الدكتور فراس باسم إسماعيل النعيمي الحقيقة الدكتور فراس يعني طاقة علمية رائعة جدا مثل العراق خير تمثيل في الجامعات العالمية وخصوصا يمثل الجامعة التكنولوجية باعتباره أحد خريجي جامعة التكنولوجية في البكالوريوس وأعتقد حتى الماجستير أعتقد نعم كلام صحيح فبصراحة شرفنا اليوم في الجامعة التكنولوجية نستضيفه دكتور فراس حل ضيف على الجامعة التكنولوجية قبل أشهر وبصراحة كان لقائنا ويا لقاء مثمر جدا نتج عنا تشكيل فرق بحثية وإن شاء الله الآن إحنا في طور إعداد اتفاقية تعاون علمي في المرحلة الأخيرة الفريق البحث الآن بين الجامعة التكنولوجية ومركز بحوث الطاقة في جامعة تينجا ناشونال الماليزية اللي هو يترأس هذا المركز البحوث الحقيقة بلشنا ب يعني باكورة أعمالنا في مجال البحث العلمي نتأمل الكثير 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 من هذا التعاون نتأمل الاستفادة من دكتور فراس ودعم الجامعة التكنولوجية بمختلف الأوجه اليوم أحد هذه الأوجه وجوده ويانا في هذه المحاضرة المهمة الحقيقة اللي ينقل بها تجربته وخبرته في مجال سمارت باور جنريشن هذا المجال المهم جدا على مستوى العالم وعلى مستوى العراق بشكل خاص كل احنا نعرف موضوع الباور جنريشن والأزمة الحالية الموجودة في العراق في موضوع الباور جنريشن وخصوصا وخصوصا في تطبيقات سمارت الخاص بالباور جنريشن البلد بحاجة إلى معرفة ونقل تكنولوجيا ونقل معرفة في هذا الاتجاه أتمنى راح تكون إن شاء الله هذه المحاضرة قيمة وأنا متأكد من ذلك ومفيدة في نفس الوقت وأنا تدريسيا أنا طلبت من من تدريسي الجامعة وبشكل خاص تدريسي الهندسة الميكانيكية والهندسة الكهربائية والكهروميكاني والسيطرة والنظم أيضا هم الأكثر معنيين بهذا المجال خصوصا اللي عندهم شغل وبحوث ودراسات في هذا الاختصاص أنه يحضرون هذه المحاضرة قد تكون إن شاء الله بداية تعاون علمي وتعاون معرفي وأنا شخصيا أدعو الدكتور فراس التواصل في هذا المجال إن شاء الله ممكن يكون ويانا في كورس ماجستير أو كورس دكتوراه نفكر انه اونلاين يعني يكون جزء من الكورس ف يعني حقيقه نتشرف بوجودك اليوم دكتور فراس من الشرف الله يحفظكم وجامعه التكنولوجيا جامعتكم اي شيء في الجامعه التكنولوجيا هو متاح لحضرتك وللجميع من يعمل معك في مركزك شكرا جزيلا جزيل الشكر والاحترام شكرا جزيلا لحضرتكم دكتور يسعدني ويشرفني أن ألتقي بحضراتكم اليوم ضمن سلسلة محاضرات الأستاذ الزائر التي تنظمها شعبة البحث والتطوير في رئاسة الجامعة التكنولوجية شرف كبير أن استضافت دكتور فراس النعيمي دكتور فراس هو يعني أحد مؤسسين وكذلك مدير مركز بحوث الطاقة في جامعة تنجا الماليزية ودكتور فراس لديه أكثر من 130 بحث علمي منشور وحائز على 30 جائزة دولية ولديه حاليا تمويل مالي يصل إلى 1.3 مليون دولار حقيقة المحاضرة راح تكون نوعية في ضمن سلسلة محاضراتنا إن شاء الله تكون ذا فائدة للجميع أترك المجال إلى الأستاذ الدكتور دكتور فراس لبدء المحاضرة مشكورا شكرا جزيلا السلام عليكم جميعا صباحكم عافية وبركة كل عام وأنتم بخير رمضان كريم مبارك لكم جميعا طبعا في البداية أشكركم جزيل الشكر على الاستضافة شكر خاص إلى رئيس الجامعة التكنولوجية الأستاذ أحمد الغبان وكذلك الأستاذ الدكتور حيدر ضمن وأخونا الدكتور أمجد على التعاون المستمر وعلى دعمهم المتواصل لخريجي الجامعة التكنولوجية ومثل ما ذكر بروف حيدر إن شاء الله نعمل المستطاع من أجلكم وأي مجال في المستقبل أي تعاون في مجال الطاقة المتجددة أنا حاضر وعلى أتم الاستعداد 
so today I'm going to present to you one of uh, the topic, which is a more interesting topic nowadays, which is more on the smart power generation. Uh, so when you're talking about the uh, power uh, generation or smart power generation, it's a unique abbreviation, is a unique term. So it's a combination all in one of the valuable features that enables the transition to the modern and the sustainable power system. Uh, what I found so far nowadays that mostly of the uh, systems is still at the traditional mode, which is we need from us to have a step forward to convert all to a modern and the state sustainable uh, power uh, system. Uh, so uh, shown on the screen, as you can see here, is when you're talking about the smart power generation, it means you are talking about enabling the exist power system to operate at the maximum efficiency. You are, as an engineer, you're always looking to enhance the efficiency. How to enhance the efficiency? There is a lot of methods, a lot of approaches that we are going to adopt it. Uh, secondly, here, the efficiently observing the current and the system load variation. Uh, we are in Iraq. Uh, we have a problem of the load. So it means we need to manage the load smartly. There is a lot of methods need to be considered, which is I'm going to talk about it uh, later on. Uh, thirdly, uh, we're looking for a system that able to optimize the integration of the wind uh, and solar power. Um, if you refer back to the, any literature review, any articles, any program you can find nowadays, we know it depends completely on the single uh, source of renewable energy. We always looking for the hybrid system uh, representing by uh, combining wind along with uh, solar or the uh, an, uh, wave propagator along with solar and so on. And also here, what I can say that uh, uh, the, uh, the smart power generation uh, provide a power system reverse capacity that does not consume fuel or generate the emission. This means in all the countries, we should follow the standard of emission. Um, and I don't know, in Iraq, for sure, there is a standard of emission, which is not should be exceeded. So in order to come out with any uh, smart power generation system, you should follow the, uh, the country uh, emission standard to avoid any problem in the future and the global warming. So I have uh, now to share with you a short video about the uh, smart uh, power generation, okay? Which is will takes only uh, less than two minutes, okay? Electricity plays such a vital role in all our lives. It's crucial for enabling economic growth and improves the standard of living for billions of people. Yet the world of tomorrow will need even more of it and will face an increasing number of challenges when introducing renewable energy and developing an affordable, reliable, and sustainable power system. Overcoming these challenges and using more renewables is vital, but it won't be easy. Low carbon power systems of the future will combine many different energy sources, creating variations in supply. Balancing these variations with increasing demand is going to require a dynamic, flexible, and efficient solution. A solution called smart power generation. Okay, I hope you have enjoyed the, the short video. Okay, so uh, what been mentioned earlier that when you're talking about the future of electricity, you should consider the three elements, which is to be affordable, sustainable, reliable, okay? This is all the main elements of the smart power generation. This is the elements from where we are going to start uh, our uh, session for today. So uh, when you're talking about the, uh, the affordable, it means you, the focus should be on low generation cost. Nowadays, our main focus on how to optimize the cost uh, by having the high efficiency, 
low CO2, I mean the emission, as well as the low maintenance cost. Mostly of my uh, ongoing now projects on how to optimize the maintenance cost. Also, when you, let's try to be more specific into the cost. When you're talking about the cost effective, it means you should at the same time, you have the optimal plan sizing. So it means the mud generation with the load, the matching, as well as the technology should be competitive with the existing one and also will be able to uh, expand. Uh, furthermore, if you're talking here about reliable, so ability to dispatch, this means we should fast starting and fast ramps the rates up and down and low minimum loads. For sure, uh, we give the orders to all the, uh, the power sources, such as power plants on the uh, demands, correct? And should there is a, a, a match with the, the output of the power sources and the required demand from the market. At the same time, all our projects, all our uh, pictures should be sustainable. It means we need to have the concepts of low environmental effect by lowering the CO2 uh, emission rate and the local emission. And also we should minimize the water consumption. Okay, if we move further, okay. Okay, here, when you're talking about uh, the rising standards of living, this is everywhere, I believe. Uh, we facing this one, the standard of living is keep higher day by day. So everyone wants more electricity, not to restrict demand, but to try to make the role of the fossil fuel less dominant. That's why um, maybe in the third world countries, we still, uh, depends completely on the fossil fuel, uh, while the, uh, the first world countries, now they start to demand almost 20 to 50% on the renewable uh, sources. Uh, mostly of us facing the climate change, uh, which is the, the ozone depletion is caused by the chemical compounds, which is uh, on the global warming. This is all to be considered into account when you're talking about the future of the energy sources. Uh, then also at the same time, I found there is increasing the importance of the electricity. So strong uh, electricity is impossible, but not efficient for the long period of time. This means we cannot depend completely on the traditional sources for too long. We should, from now, we have the plan for the future, for the coming 10 years, for the coming five years. Okay, make your plan is short, it's not for the long term. Okay, we need to have the rapid change. So here, when you're talking about the uh, energy efficiency, which is the main uh, point here, uh, there is a lot of challenge. Okay, there is a solutions when you're talking about the energy efficiency. Energy efficiency overall is not stable. It's not stable, what is effect also the load. So there is a limit for the available uh, amount of non-combustion uh, renewable energy sources. This is correct, this is the fact. From where it came, the, uh, from the river as a hydropower energy and also the wind and the sunset, by the way, uh, maybe here in Malaysia is not applicable, the, the wind. Uh, we depends completely on the sunlight. That's why we have a lot of projects on the solar panels, as well as the nuclear power. Uh, all of us agree this is the potential risk, okay, especially for our uh, future health. So uh, the efficiency of electrical appliances has uh, improved with uh, some amount of energy, the output is much larger, which it will help to decrease the need for the increase of production of the electricity. And as been mentioned earlier on, we should plan in well between the output and also the uh, demands of our customers. So 
here this is the uh, we are spending the electricity and we our needs is keep increasing day by day but you need to take in, into account we need also to reduce the usage of the uh, uh, traditional uh, sources uh, i will give you an example about the demand uh, of electricity in malaysia uh, this is what i found so far uh, that the uh, it's keep increasing year by year okay uh, which is um, uh, here we have the the maximum uh, mega volt so uh, and we have the mega uh, within the the years we have started to take the the data from 1990 to almost to uh, 2010 and we found it's it's obvious there is increment Okay, and now I'm talking about the 2022. So it means it's keep increasing. And shown on the uh, screen below, uh, there is uh, another two states, uh, which is uh, Sabah and Sarawak in Malaysia. Uh, they have the higher uh, demand, okay, the higher uh, demand with the higher uh, capacity, higher efficiency usage. So this is an example on where we need to start. And for sure in Iraq, there is as well the same. They have um, uh, done the mapping between the demand and the output in order to avoid any uh, problem. So let me uh, continue on this. So I mentioned many times that the demand should be planned and investigated in well. So, one of the, the, the main sources, which is the coal, the charcoal, okay? Here we are, uh, we here in Malaysia, we have the coal fire power plant, uh, which is the dominant energy source of the, uh, of electricity production. And shown on the uh, figure below the sources, uh, there is uh, sources of electricity, which is on the oil, on the natural gases, on the coal, biomass, and the gas production. And we can find out from the, the, the figure, okay? So we can see we still depends completely on the oil, okay? This is what I found so far, especially for the third world countries, as well as we depends on natural gases and the coal. So here, this is representing to us the prim primary energy conception by the fuel type and the natural gas uh, production. Okay, so if we move further here and we let's uh, talk about the uh, emission. As I said earlier on, uh, there is a standards we should uh, follow on, uh, especially when you're talking about determining the cost and electricity. And for sure, you're going to put some money and at the, by the end of the day, you will get some money, okay? Uh, the money that you are going to spend on the fuel, you're going to spend on the investment, on the operation, on the maintenance. This is, I keep repeating this one, the maintenance. We should uh, focus on the maintenance nowadays, on how to optimize the maintenance uh, activities, as well for any power plants, when you need to construct, when you need to come out with, you should have an insurance as well as the availability, the penalty on the consumers, as well as on the manufacturer. At the same time, there is a money out will be as kilowatts, which is electricity, as well heat uh, and cold. The availability is represented by bonus, as well as the dynamic uh, surfaces, uh, which has been highlighted here that in competitive electricity market, the production costs per the kilowatt determine the opportunities for the profit of the power plant. And, and also here, you, we should take in, into account, it's important for decision maker of the new power plant project. And maybe mostly of the audience here agree with me, why we not come out with the new power plants instead of uh, spending our uh, money on the maintenance. Uh, if you need to come out with the new power plants, you should consider, this is the, 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 the map that I have shown to you, between the money input and money output. 
If there is a profit, please go ahead with your new project, which is the proper long-term projections of development, as well as you should have the capital cost, uh, either uh, by someone going to invest on the power plant or going to uh, construct the, uh, the power plants using the, the government uh, uh, funds, as well as, uh, which is need to be also consider the fuel cost, which is keep increasing nowadays, especially during the, uh, the COVID pandemic and the, the, the after the COVID pandemic. Okay, you can see that the fuel cost nowadays is keep increasing. It means if you need to suggest to come out with the new power plants, it's not easy decision. It's you need to study this option for many months to come out with the uh, right decision. Uh, so, <clears throat> so here we have talked earlier about the uh, renewable energy sources. Uh, one of the uh, the promising uh, source with it was the solar, and. Uh, we found in Malaysia that well, there is a five reasons to go for solar in Malaysia. Uh, firstly, uh, by the way, in Iraq also, you can uh, consider uh, the solar as energy, uh, main energy source even then. So solar PV is safe and durable. So protection against increase the electricity price is not really uh, uh, very uh, touchable. As well, he's uh, here is contribute towards saving the environment. So it means a green solution, and also a protection against the currency uh, market fluctuation. But I found nowadays is not really it's obvious the fluctuation because it's keep increasing. It's keep increasing. Even nowadays there is no such uh, fluctuation available. Okay, so uh, if we move further, uh, from your left hand, we have the output of modern wind turbine adapted for high wind speed, depending upon, this is an example, by the way, uh, with the nominal output of two uh, megawatt. By the way, uh, in Malaysia, we have done some, uh, some investigations on the visibility of using the wind uh, uh, turbines, wind turbines. And we found it's not workable to even uh, invest on uh, this uh, sector as the maximum uh, rate of the flow is not exceeding four meter per second. Okay, uh, maybe in Iraq, you need to investigate uh, how much the maximum flow rate, okay, of the wind. If it's exceed the four, so please go ahead and try to invest. Uh, from your uh, right hand, uh, we have two locations. It means the location that you need to investigate is important. So the typical power output distribution of the wind mill driven generator at optimum uh, uh, location, which is uh, 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 optimal location and the standard one, which is one on the blue and the other one is red for uh, the red. And you can see here, it's obvious that it's keep dropping, okay, within the duration, within the hours. Okay, so let me move further on the uh, production and demand. Many times I have highlighted this one, the demand, and should, there is a matching or balancing between the production and the demand. When you're talking about the production of the uh, electric uh, energy by generators, it, you should follow the variation in demand because it's travel fast and cannot be stored, correct? The demand during the summer will be higher, okay? For the countries where they have uh, four seasons. But, but here in Malaysia, we have only one season, by the way. It's always uh, hot and humid. Uh, so the demands is always high. Uh, but the people, uh, I can say they uh, use the electricity 
smartly. It's based upon them uh, consumption and also depends upon their needs. So when the speed of generation, uh, generation or generator decrease, the frequency of voltage and the current wave will decrease as well. This is the facts we should consider it when you're talking about the uh, pro uh, production of electricity. So let's move further up. You are as an electrical engineer or mechanical engineer. Uh, what is the frequency for you? It means for a change effect on sensitive equipment, it's motor drives, electrical clocks, and so on. So our main goal here to keep the frequency system close to the constant, okay? When you're talking about, let's say, uh, the frequency uh, should not be fluctuated Otherwise, it will affect all our uh, electrical equipments. So our main goal, again, to keep the frequency system close to constant, which is uh, for us, it's a, a perfect indicator to balance the production and demand. And again, please, you always need to balance between the production and demand. Otherwise, you will have a shortage in the production as well with the, the high demand. Okay, so uh, let's move uh, further here and to find, uh, to get to know how much energy is used in the world. In 2014, we found it is uh, 3128.4 kilowatt per hour, which is the conception for uh, uh, capture. So here, the demand in energy also should be highlighted, uh, the energy, uh, demand management, which is modification of the consumer demand for energy through the various methods. This is what I was talking about before a while about the peak demand in the electricity. You should study this one very well. This means you need to get to know how many months for you is the peak demand. Or maybe we can say the peak demand is maybe in Iraq from 12 uh, afternoon to 5 uh, p.m., correct? So this is the five hours, this is the peak demand. So energy demand fluctuates depending upon the weather conditions, as well as the business hours of the commercial or industrial uh, customers. So at the same time, there is a question, it will come to our minds about the percentage of the world uses the fuel fuels. Uh, so till this moment is really high, it's 82%. And it's ac ac accepted to fall, uh, meaning that the use of fossil fuel expected to be declined. This is our uh, main target. This is our main goal for the renewable uh, solutions. Okay, so uh, here, uh, shown on the screen, you can see, this is what I, uh, I said earlier, by uh, 2011, the demand on the uh, coal, the oil, the gas, it was high. So we suspecting by 2030, okay, we, we will have, we will depend completely, let's say, or maybe uh, let's say 30%, 50% uh, on the renewable sources. All the universities uh, around the world, uh, even the universities in Iraq should consider this one. Uh, you should have your, uh, what we call it, uh, renewable sources for the electricity, at least for the campus. So uh, I have visited some campuses in Jordan, in Australia, they, they depend completely on the, the, the solar energy, okay? That's why the electricity bills is almost zero. Uh, if we move further to, to, to find out the storage, Okay, we have talked uh, earlier on about the demand. We have talked about the efficiency as well. We have talked about the, the production, but no one have uh, give such intention to the storage of electricity. We are not storing the uh, electricity that we are producing. We have a lot of lost, okay? So the purpose or the main purpose of the storing energy increase the use of renewable primary sources 
and we shift the heat uh, production to where electricity production is more convenient, as well as to reduce the use of auxiliary boilers, uh, then we need to increase the stability and short-term operation of the plants. And uh, especially the researcher nowadays, if you come out with any research related to the, the battery storage and so on, uh, believe me, it will be accepted on a spot with some maybe correction, because this is the trend. This is the, the direction nowadays on how we are going to store the uh, produced electricity smartly or from the renewable sources. Uh, so one of the, uh, the technology, which is I would like to share it with you here, which is we have the, the compressed air energy storage. Okay, this is the, the full diagram. Uh, and what is the main uh, components? What is the main elements? And uh, this is we are going to compress the air almost to 70 bar. This is one of the common techniques nowadays. Uh, here in Malaysia, we have it, yes. Uh, I've been to Korea also, it's uh, also available. And let's move to uh, the another one. Okay, we have a short video about the storage uh, technology and I hope uh, you will enjoy the video, please. Compressed air energy storage. This brief animation is an overview of a concept for energy storage in the form of compressed air. This diagram represents a typical case configuration plant with all necessary components. First let's take a look at the charging process. During the periods of low power demand, the surplus electricity drives a reversible motor generator unit to run a chain of compressors for injecting air into a storage vessel. For large scale systems, a high capacity underground salt cavern is used. The energy is stored in the form of high pressure air, with the pressure typically 40 to 80 bar. For small scale systems an overground air tank can be used. The compression process normally uses intercoolers and aftercoolers to reduce the working temperature of the injected air, thus improving the compression efficiency and minimizing thermal stress on the system component walls. The pressure of compressed hair in overground tank is up to 300 bar. Now let's take a look at the discharging process. When the power generation cannot meet the load demand, the stored compressed hair is released and heated by a heat source, which can be the heat generated from the combustion of fossil fuel, or the heat recovered from the compression process. The compressed air energy is finally captured by the turbines. The waste heat from the system exhaust can be recycled by a recuperator unit. The same process takes place in the case of overground air tank discharge. The high price electricity generated can be sold to the grid. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, I hope you got to know how, what is the mechanism of the compressed air, and I hope it will be adopted uh, as well by the researcher and the power plant uh, operators. So there's another storage technology which is uh, widely used, which is here, uh, heat in water. Okay, I, I, I believe there is a lot of studies have been done on the heat in water uh, storage technology, which is uh, basically depends upon two principles. Firstly, that the hot water is slightly lighter than the cold water. So hottest water uh, tend to stay in the upper part of the water tank. At the same time, uh, instead of the cogeneration unit, a heat pump driven by the, an electrical motor can also supply the heat to the uh, storage tank. Uh, so you can see here, it depends completely on the cold and the heat water and through which we can uh, store uh, the, the generated uh, heat as a, a power. Uh, so let's uh, move further here when you're talking about KPI. Uh, for sure you are maybe as a, a lecturer or the uh, engineer in the, the field, you have your own KPI. 
So uh, also we have the KPI performance indicator for the energy storage system, which is uh, completely depends upon uh, seven factors, uh, starting with the uh, energy storage investment as well, the power-based investment, turnaround efficiency, ramp up time, time-based loads, O&M storage, as well as the storage system life, life converters, de depth of discharge. This is how we, uh, we, we have done uh, the comparison uh, when you're talking about the hydro, so your uh, energy storage investment will be between 30 to 60. While for the uh, uh, compressed air, the, uh, which is greater than uh, 30, you can find here that the power-based investment for the hydrogen is greater than 1,800, while for the compressed air is 1,500. This is what they have done to compare between all the sources of energy in terms of energy storage uh, system. Uh, so for sure here, we have to talk about the road to the goal which is, uh, there is many aspects to, uh, can, we can consider it as important uh, for the power plants operator. Um, we have talked about the investment, we have talked about the net fuel efficiency, the fuel price, yes, this one is keep increasing day by day. And also the uh, emission, which it should be uh, to the standard, as well the lead time to the commissioning, Okay, as well as the startup along with the ramp up rate. Okay, you can see here we have consider either as high coal or uh, lignite, and we have the nuclear and the go gas uh, engine uh, simple. Uh, by the way, we have uh, collected all of this one from the online resources. Um, this is uh, the, uh, the researcher and the people who is interested. They keep updating this data, but the most important to us, we, 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 we have to reach to our goal, okay, by considering all of these KPIs. So if we move further here, uh, when you're talking about the key performance indicator for the power plant, uh, Frankly speaking, that we foc should focus on the special capital cost as well as the specific, uh, specific fuel, uh, fuel cost. Uh, you can see here that the specific uh, capital cost, which is effect of the equivalent full load running hours per year on the specific uh, capital cost of the electricity uh, production. It means uh, you need, it's worthable to have such power plant. If you keep uh, producing and your uh, capital cost keep decreasing, it means you are at the dangerous zone. Let's move to the second part, which is the specific fuel uh, costs, whereas the generators with relatively high efficiency at the full output train to have less drastic decrease in the efficiency than the units with the lower maximum efficiency. If you go to any power plant, you will find out that the efficiency is only 50%, okay? We just operate, uh, start the operation for this power plant. If you check the efficiency on the uh, monitoring GUI, you will find out it's only 50 to 60%. After 10 years, this uh, efficiency will decrease, correct? Then it will reach to, uh, uh, what we call it a percentage or rate, the operator should decide on closing that power plant because it's reached to this age. So it means after, uh, after 20 years or 25 years, we need to shut down that plant and we will start with another uh, a new power plant. Okay, uh, so there is a time. Okay, there is a age for any power plant should be considered especially when we, that power plant reached to the lower efficiency. So let's also hear talking about the cost uh, and being mentioned that now I have many ongoing projects on optimization on the maintenance cost 
for sure, when you uh, try to optimize the activities uh, for the maintenance, indirectly, you will reduce the uh, maintenance cost as well the operation cost, which is represented by the fixed cost, uh, such as the insurance salaries, operator crew, technical crew, administration, as well the security. Also, uh, variable cost to be considered until the operation cost, which is cost that relate directly with the amount of the running hours, such as the wearing of the parts that you need to replace, as well as lubricating the oil. This is just very simple uh, example. And there is also, I found uh, laterly, there is a cost related to the environment. Uh, which is uh, a specific uh, CO2 emission, which is depends upon the fuel type and the fuel efficiency, as well uh, here, here that the CO2 emission, this depends upon among the technology and the fuel at the optimum uh, uh, condition. Okay, it means you should take care about the, the conditions for your uh, fuel, fuel efficiency, as well the specific uh, emission uh, for CO2, as well as CO2 uh, fuel in terms of the black coil steam instead of in terms of natural gas engines uh, cogeneration. Uh, so what else? Uh, here we have to talk about the startup time and ramp up uh, rates. This one, see, this is on all of these kinds of the cost all of these kinds of the aspects I have considered for my KPI as the power plant uh, operator. So startup at time is the time there is required to reach the situation that the generator runs uh, synchronized in parallel to the grid after receiving that start comment. So it means they working together. This is the meaning of it. Starting and ramping up of the three different uh, 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 generating technologies, all working together to come out with the, uh, to match or balance with the required demand, the gas engine, GTCC, and the steam plant. Uh, there is, uh, for us as operator for power plants, we always have the availability and reliability equation, uh, which is uh, through which we can find out the operational uh, uh, availability which is depends completely on the average time between the maintenance action over the average time between the maintenance action, maintenance time, logistic delay times 100%. Uh, it means that the availability is depends partly on the maintenance type and the maintenance interval. It means for how long or how often you need to, uh, what we call it to practice uh, the maintenance activities. What I found so far nowadays, we keep doing the maintenance. And by, by the way, this is costing a lot. Hello, no need to do the maintenance. Try to go to the optimization of the maintenance approach. If it's this one not valid, try to close your power plant. Try to depends on other sources of the energy. Uh, so here, there is a properties of uh, the smart generating plant. If you need to come out with the smart generating plant, first of all, uh, you should ensure the, the fuel is uh, flexible. Okay, it means uh, you can change the fuel. You, it means we don't need to depend upon uh, the one type of uh, the fuel, should be. You need to use the technology of a blending as well. So short building time, low sensitivity to the ambient condition, low capital impact, easy adaptable capacity, minimum maintenance outage time. Yeah, this is very important, as well as the low capital expenditure. This means uh, we have spent only $1 million to come out with this uh, smart generating plan, okay? While before we have spent, we have invested like $7 million to come out with such a plan. As well as here, uh, one of the important points, which is need also to be considered into the account that the high fuel efficiency and the wide load range. Okay, so uh, if we go to the smart grid, this is the term 
Hello, I'm talking about smart power generation. But under the smart power generation, we should talk about the smart grid. Smart grid, it means uh, we have the network. This one network uh, of many smart renewable sources. Let's say, for example, shown here, we have the uh, solar panels on the houses, okay? Uh, so here we have the storage in the middle to, to store all the uh, uh, power generated uh, on the buildings as well. Uh, by the way, this is also looks like the smart city, okay? We have the smart power plant. Uh, we have the, the wind farm is here. Uh, and you can see all the sources here integrated to each others such as uh, uh, we have the smart appliances, demand management, sensors need to be considered, which is part of this uh, networking that I mentioned is integrated to each other, disturbance in the grid as well. We have central power plant, industrial plant, storage generators, along with the wind farm. All of this one, all of this network can be addressed as a smart grid. So uh, you need to make your uh, house smart. How to make it? What, what you suspect? This is what I found uh, for mostly of the first world countries and they have the smart cities, the smart homes. Uh, we have the uh, smart camera, correct? We have the frontline security layer. We have the communication system is a smart one. As well, the entertainment to be enhanced to be uh, and such uh, smartly uh, managed. Uh, also the motion uh, detection need to be smart enough. Uh, the irrigation system, I have many projects nowadays on the uh, smart irrigation system, which is I'm planning to implement this one in Iraq very soon with my research team. The vehicle detection, okay, whether your uh, vehicle safe or not, environment control, this means the conditions on the ambient. You use the uh, air conditioning system, but this one, your air conditioning system also need to be smart. If uh, you know, it's cold weather, so uh, we will have the air condition to work or to operate on the higher temperature and so on. Internet is a smart media, okay. The pool and the smart and also the lighting system. Uh, Let's try to end our uh, topic today with uh, a co-generation. This is a scheme to my mind many times, and mostly of the researcher uh, tried to come out with a clear picture about uh, the, uh, the co-generation. Let's beg that the generation of the electricity and the other joint, especially the utilization of the steam left over from the electricity generation to produce heat. It means we will use the recycled, okay? The recycled one. That's why uh, these kinds of projects, we call it harvesting of heat, okay? To regenerate back. So you can see here that as shown in the flow chart uh, that uh, we have in this on the natural gas is like $1, okay? So on the utility and the boiler, so by the end of the day, uh, we will be, uh, see, see, see here the balancing between the input and the output. You can see here the $1 has become 65 cent is going to waste and 35 for the power. Uh, for the, uh, the boiler, I mean the part of power plants, 70 it will go to the steam and 30% is waste, which is worthable to be considered here. It means you need to balance between what you have invested and what you have come out with, okay? Uh, the waste for sure to the environment. This is the traditional generation. Let's call the co-generation by investing also $1 of the natural gas to the gas engine or the gas turbine. We find out that 35 cent is to power and 45 cents to the steam or hot water, and 20% to the waste. So it's a promising tool. So I would like to advise all of you, it means to go for the cogeneration technique to your 
uh, facility with the efficiency you can see it's 80% of your system. So <clears throat> let's have an uh, idea through this video on the combined cycle uh, power plant, which is part of the code generation. Combined cycle technology enables power plants to generate 50% more electricity from its fuel than it would with a conventional single cycle power system. Under this dual phase system, two combustion turbine generators operate in conjunction with two heat recovery steam generators and a steam turbine generator. In the first cycle, fuel is burned and the resulting combustion gases power two turbine generators to produce electricity. Hot exhaust normally lost during this process is captured and routed through the two heat recovery steam generators. These units boil water to create steam, which spins an additional turbine generator and produces more electricity. Finally, the steam is discharged into a condenser which returns the steam to its liquid state for recycling. Okay, so you got to know on how the, the combined cycle, uh, I think if you are a mechanical engineer or mechanical professor, so you are aware of the combined cycles and what is the benefits, uh, because uh, through the combined cycle, we can enhance the, the efficiency. So let's go directly to the benefits of the cogeneration. Okay, uh, what we said earlier by the fuel gas input, like say uh, eight uh, megajoules. So we have uh, higher electricity as well. We have higher uh, heat or chill. Uh, in terms of the fuel input, okay, uh, using the separate point, we will get higher efficiency. It can reach to uh, 90%. Uh, so you can see here for the cogeneration system, the efficiency of the electricity, it will be 45, but for the overall, the system, it will be 85%. Uh, percent. So it means there is no a doubt that the cogeneration uh, modification, it will help to enhance the efficiency of the power plant. So let's be more specific on the benefits of the cogeneration that less uh, fuel to produce uh, a given energy output reduces the air pollution, which is our main concern, and improve the power quality and reducing the energy cost by almost 40 to 60 percent. Uh, so I will end our session for today with uh, some general truth uh, that we have gone through it, which is the fossil fuel resources are ultimately uh, infinite, so, as well as the trans uh, transition grids for electricity, even in huge ones, cannot uh, store the energy. So it means when you need to come out for, with any renewable sources, you should thinking at the same time about the storage application, about the, on how to store uh, your uh, generated uh, energy. Also very flexible electricity generation is needed in the future. This is my advice uh, to all of the interested people uh, to keep talking about the flexible uh, electricity generation sources, as well as the uh, smart appliances only help to smooth short-term electricity uh, demand. And lastly, for the power supply, a good neighbor is better than a distant friend. Thank you very much, everyone. I hope you have enjoyed the presentation. And now I open for questions and answers. Shukran jazeelan, Doctor, ala hadihi al-muhabara. Ani jiddan istamta'at biha, wa insha'Allah, baqi al-zumala. Aydhan, istafada wa istamta'u min hadihi al-muhabara. طبعا محاضرة حضرتك ذكرتني بفكرة قبل عشرين سنة من كنا الطالب بكالوريوس تعرف من بعد ألفين وثلاثة بدت ال يعني بدأ العراق يعتمد شبه كلي على محطات أو المولدات في المناطق المولد التوليد الكهرباء نعم. يعني فأنا كنا الطالب صارت عندي فكرة إنه أروح على صاحب المولد وأطرح عليه فكرة إنه ليش ما 
يخلي جير بوكس على المحرك وبالتالي يسوي بالانس كمية المستهلك مع عدد دورات الملف وبالتالي نقلل من كمية الوقود اللي صرفه نعم كانت في بالي انه نسوي فد عملية بالانس انه ما يستهلك وقود لان مثل ما اشارت حضرتك انه قد يكون هو مشغل واكو كثير من المنازل خارج المنزل ما مستخدمين الكهرباء نعم وهو دا يستهلك كهرباء فكانت الفكرة مالتي انه نحط جير بوكس ونحط فد حساس انه يشوف ايش قد الديمايند وبالتالي مثل السيارة من تريد السوق سريع تكبس اكثر ومن تريد السوق بطيء تقلل وبالتالي يسوي عنده بس يعني ما لقيت اذن صاغيه من عندهم. انا عجبتني جدا الفكره مال عمليه الخزن الزائد عن طريق الهواء نعم. المضغوط وكلها هاي افكار ان شاء الله تصب بانه يصير عندنا برين ستروم حتى يصير عندنا فد افكار انه كيفيه انه يعني استفاده من الفائض واستثماره في وقت لاحق. نعم. نعم. انا اشكرك مره اخرى وافتح باب المجال الى زملائي اللي يحب يسال دكتور فراس بخصوص المحاضره يا ريت يسوي رفع يد وان شاء الله نسمح له بالحديث. ايضا دكتور فراس حبيت انوه الى فد نعم. ملاحظه حضرتك اشارت نعم. لها الى بهذا الكو جنريشن نعم. نعم. بالكو جنريشن يعني حضرتك يعني تعرف احنا من درسنا ماده المحطات ان احنا نعرف انه بعض المحطات قامت تسوي تو ستيجز وثري ستيجز من من التوربين حتى تحاول اكستراكت از ماتش از ذي كان فروم ذا انرجي اوف ذا ستيم فهذا اللي عرضته حضرتك اتوقع هو ينصب بنفس التوجه انه نحاول نعم. انه الاكزوز ما يعني يعني ريسايكل بالضبط اي نعم لذلك يزودون من الستيجز مال المحطه فقد تصل الى حاليا ثلاثه حاليا ثلاثه وصلت نعم حاليا ثلاثه ثري ستيجز نعم نعم بس هو يعني زياده الافشنسي بس مم. Uh, it needs a lot of uh, analysis and investigation before you come out with like three stages. نعم لأنه هو أكيد من بعد يريد يحتاج reheating يعني هو يعني حتى من يخل من من يطلع من أول stage يحتاج reheating. إيه ممكن reheater one, reheater two, three, and also we have the preheater. نعم دكتورة سندوس جمعة من قسم الهندسة الكهروميكانيكية تفضلي. تفضلي دكتورة. دكتورة سندس تسمعيني؟ دكتور علاء تقدر تتكلم؟ تفضل. السلام عليكم عليكم السلام عليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته شكرا جزيلا دكتور فراس على هذه المحاضره القيمه شكرا جزيلا دكتور امجد على ادارتك المحاضره دكتور طبعا انا تخصص ميكانيك تطبيق وتوليد طاقه بس يعني عندي نعم. فد شغل مقارب تقريبا يعني في جانب معين ذكرت حضرتك بالمحاضره اللي هو المنتنس نعم. نعم يعني ما اعرف شلون يعني تسوون بريدكشن للمنتنس كوست او يو منشن سم اوكي سمثينج لايك ذيس ديورينج يور لكتشر يا ثانك يو فيري ماتش دكتور علاء اف يو هاف انذر بوينت بليز هايلايت اضيف شيء بسيط نعم. حاليا نعم. احنا يعني عندنا طالب دكتوراه جاي يشتغل على فول ديتكشن اند دايجنوسيس ان نون توربين بليدز اوكي اي فشغل عندنا على هذا الموضوع تقريبا بس ما اعرف ذكرت حضرتك على البريدكشن اوف مينتنس اوكي شو شنو المواضيع او شنو الامور اللي تستخدمونها هنا آه شكرا جزيلا على السؤال دكتور علاء طبعا آه سؤالك هو يتضمن واحد من البروجكتات اللي انهيت السنه الماضيه احنا ما نسوي بريدكشن للمينتنس احنا نسوي اوبتمايزيشن للمينتنس <تصفيق> يعني uh, يعني uh, for example this generator we need like 35 activities we need 35 activities to uh, practice the maintenance فانت ايش راح تسوي optimization method عندك كثير من الانتليجنت سيستم ممكن تستخدمها 
واحده من الميثودز اللي اشجعك تستخدمها اسمها بارتيكل سوام انتليجنس بارتيكل سوام هي تسوي لك اوبتمايزيشن اللي هي انه يو ار جوينج تو ريموف ذا انسيسري اكتيفيتيز ذيس از ذا فيرست سكند ثينك يو ار جوينج تو كومباين ذا اكتيفيتيز توجذر سو يعني من 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 خلينا نقول 35 اكتيفيتيز انت قللتها الى 17 او 18 هاي الستيج الاول انت اندايركتلي ايش راح يصير عندك؟ تقليل بالكلفه لان انت عندك الكلفه مال كل اكتيفيتي زين فمن سويت لها اوبتمايزيشن يوزنج بارتيكل سوام انتليجنس طبعا هي كثير اكو من الاوبتمايزيشن تولز اللي هي ممكن تقارن وطبعا الاوبتمايزيشن مال المينتننس يختلف من تطبيق الى اخر ممكن البارتيكل سوام انتليجنت هي بروميسنج تول فور باور بلانتس بس ممكن اذا انت تريد على اتجاه اخر او فيلد اخر ممكن اكو غير انتليجنس سيستم يكون بروميسنج تو هاي وحده فعلى اثرها انه راح يصير عندك تقليل بالكرفة بس يعني يرجى انه يعني الحيطه انه البرفورمنس مال الباور بلانت مالتك ما راح يقل صح انت قللت المينتنس اكتيفيتيز انه ما اريد اني من قللت الاكتيفيتيز وصلحت بوقت قليل ورا يوم ثلاثه ايضا صار عندنا يعني شت داون من جديد فانه لازم يكون هناك بالانس بين ذا مينتنس اكتيفيتيز از ويل از ذا بيرفورمانس اوف ذا باور بلانت عفوا دكتور علاء سؤالك الثاني كان على لا هو هذا كان دكتور يعني هو اريد اعرف طبيعه الاوبتمايزيشن او الشغل المنتنس اللي تشتغلوه فصار واضح انا حاضر اي تفاصيل اخرى انا حاضر شكرا شكرا جزيلا دكتور شكرا جزيلا شكرا شكرا دكتور جزيل الشكر شكرا دكتور على ننتقل يمكن دكتوره سندس خل دكتوره سندس الان تقدرين تتحدثين اي نعم اقدر اتحدث السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله دكتوره اولا الشكر المقدم الى دكتور فراس لاستضافته بهذه المحاضره القيمه واحنا ملتقين انا وحضرتك دكتور فراس باحد المؤتمرات لانه انا احط طلاب دكتور حسين القيم نعم نعم اذكرك نعم اذكرك نعم اهلا يعني وسهلا نعم. بك والشكر موصول ايضا الى السيد رئيس الجامعه والسيد المعاون العلمي والاستاذ دكتور امجد كذلك شكرا جزيلا طبعا حقيقة محاضرة جدا قيمة ويا رب إن شاء الله التوفيق للجميع احنا حقيقة بالعراق أنا حاليا أشتغل أيضا بالجامعة التكنولوجية دكتورة وأيضا مستشارة لشؤون الطاقة لمحافظة الأنبار حاليا التوجه العراق راح يكون حاليا التوجه هو حاليا احنا نستخدمه هو التوجه لوجود الطاقات البديلة ومن أحد هذه الطاقات البديلة اللي مثل ما ذكرت حضرتك هي الطاقة الشمسية الوفرتها موجودة في العراق وبصورة نعم. خاصة بالأنبار لأنه الأنبار يعتبر شدة الإشعاع الشمسي أعلى بهواية الأنبار ومن ثم بغداد ومن ثم البصرة نعم حسب إحصائيات الأنواع الجوية وحسب إحصائيات أيضاً كثير من البحوث فحالياً إذا الله سهل إحنا نسويها حالياً أكثر من مجموعة لتوليد الكهرباء عن طريق الطاقة الشمسية وكذلك أنواع أخرى من أنواع الطاقات أيضاً الموجودة البخار ووند يعني يستخدم ويند وبخار م. تحت الأرض هذه آه إحدى براءات الاختراع اللي حاليا تم التوجه إليها من قبل السيد المحافظ جيوث... هي مو جيوثيرمال دكتور دي نعم. نفتح خندق تحت الأرض نفق ويصير نعم. به سيستم كامل آه أحد براءات الاختراع اللي كانت ألمانية هذه وهسه حاليا آه نستخدمها بتايلند نعم آه إن شاء الله راح تصير أيضا هما زيارة لهم حتى نشوف شنو الشغل مالته حتى يتم تثبيت العمل به بالعراق لأن الكوست مالته أرخص بهواية والافشنسي اعلى بهوايه حتى من السولار لان تعرف السولار يحتاج صيانه دائميه. نعم. او اكو همات عده اشكالات بها في حاله انه وجود الغبار والاتربه واحنا الجو مالتنا اكثر شيء يعني تقريبا بهذا. فحاليا نعم. نتجه ايضا لهذا الاتجاه، بس هذا ما يمنع انه تعاقد مع وزاره الكهرباء اللي تم هسه حاليا تقريبا 300 ميجا واكثر لتوليد الكهرباء عن طريق الطاقه الشمسيه، عن طريق الخلايا، فحاليا تم نعم. التعاقد لها. الانبار هسه حاليا تعتبر تقريبا اللي هي الستارتنج بوينت فور رينيبل انرجي. فيري واذا good. الله سهل اي اذا الله سهل راح نبدي نتسع على يعني نطاق واسع من المحافظات كردستان العراق ايضا كلش هواي يتجه لهذا الاتجاه 
وبعد نعم. نحاول انه تثقيف الشعب العراقي لاستخدام الخلايا اللي هو هذا نعم. جدا مهم هو تثقيف فاذا نعم. الله سهل راح نسوي سلسله برامج فان شاء الله نحب نستضيف او حضرتك باحد من هذه سلسله البرامج انا حاضر مستعد اي شيء للعراق احنا حاضرين اي حقيقه لانه احنا بدنا نحتاج الى تثقيف جدا مهم للشعب العراقي لاستخدام هذه يعني المنظومات او الانواع الرينيبل انرجي وبالاخص اللي هي السولار فان شاء الله يا ربي احنا ماشيين بهالعمل احنا على استعداد تام دكتوره سندس مز... انا على استعداد تام و... والكونتاكتس مالتي ايضا راح اكتبه بالشات بار و... يعني أم... جميع ممكن الاتصال بيه على فيوتشر كولابريشن فيوتشر ادفايس فيوتشر كونتريبيوشن انا حاضر ونعم من حضرتك ربي يحفظك ان شاء الله يا ربي ووفقك جزيل الشكر والاحترام الله يحفظك ربي يحفظك تستعمل لي شكرا جزيلا شكرا دكتور امجد شكرا جزيلا دكتوره شكرا جزيلا لمداخلتك ننتقل الى دكتور سليمان ليث مرحبا دكتور انا سليمان اهلا اهلا سليمان الطالب اهلا بك تحيه لك وللسيد دكتور فراس السيد المساعد العلمي حضوره والشكر موصول على اشراف الجلسه شكرا جزيلا طبعا انا طالب مرحله رابعه بالجامعه التكنولوجيه وموظف همين بمحطه كهرباء جنوب بغداد هي اقرب محطه كهرباء للجامعه نفسها نعم طبعا احنا هسه هاي التقنيات اللي ذكرتها مال كومباين سايكل مال التوربينز نعم. احنا من مستخدمين من جزء من عدها احنا بالعراق بس مو كل المحطات بس المحطات الحديثه كلش مثل بس مايه هسه مشتغلين نعم. بها اللي هي محطه تكون غازيه يعتمد يعني على بالاساس على دوره برايتون وتكون الاكزوست مال برايتون عالي فنستخدمها بعدين عاد بدوره ثانيه حراريه مال كار نوع عمود تولد لي هيت انجن يعني مولد حراري يولد لي بعدين حراره اغلبها هسه احنا مستخدمين تقنيات حديثه بس احنا مشكلتنا هسه يعني حاليا بالعراق تدري دكتور نقص انتاج يعني انتاج طاقه كهربائيه فاعتمدنا هسه تقنيات حديثه للسولار لان ماكو دراسه انا مثل ما قلت لك ماكو دراسه بين البرودكشن والديماند انتم لو عندكم دراسه صحيحه للديماند ويا البرودكشن كان ما عندكم اي مشكله نعم بالضبط فضل. احنا احنا هسه مشاكلنا يعني مشكله ناس اظن اظن بس فساد هو حتى سوء تخطيط وتنظيم احنا هسه اي مشروع لازم نبدا به نفكر مراحل انشاء مراحل تشغيل مراحل ازاله. امم احنا لحد هسه نعم. سوء تخطيط يعني نجي نبدي مثلا محطات غازيه واساسا احنا ما نشغلها على الغاز هي هاي المشكله مم. مثلا هيفي اويل وقل ثقيل مشاكل خلينا نقول اساسيه بس احنا لو نعتمد مثلا في هاي التقنيات اللي ذكرتها انت هواي تقنيات مم. حتى بخزن نعم. الحراره نعم بس, بس سوء تخطيط كله ماكو نعم. ماكو ما عندكم ستورج هي مشكله الستورج انه لازم تاخذ بنظر الاعتبار. يعني انتم صح راح تكون عندكم مثلا طاقه متجدده، طاقه بديله، سولر ااا آه, آه, بي في سولرز وات ايفر، بس يو هاف تو توك اباوت ذا انرجي ستورج. وير يو ار جوينج تو ستور اول اوف ذيس جنريتد باور، اوكي؟ ايضا تاخذ موضوع الباتريز اوبتمايزيشن، وش كايند اوف باتري يو ار جوينج تو سيلكت، اوكي؟ هاي طبعا كل هالامور لازم تاخذوها بالنظر الاعتبار. نعم دكتور نعم هو الظاهر يعني غياب الدور الاكاديمي مع وزاره الكهرباء الدور نعم. الاكاديمي الى الى بعد كبير بالضبط. لانه احنا راح نتفق وياك تماما احنا نعطيهم نعطيهم البعد اللي هو يعني موست ريسنت ريسيرش و ايديز بالضبط ما موجود نعم حاضرين شكرا جزيلا على شكرا جزيلا زملائي باسمكم وباسم الجامعة التكنولوجية نشكر دكتور فراس على هذه المحاضرة القيمة نشكرك الشكر الجزيل دكتور لهذا الوقت أيضا يعني فرق التوقيت بيناتنا أيضا يمكن أنتم على مشارف الإفطار يمكن الآن بعد بعد عندنا الإفطار بعد ساعتين بعد ساعتين إن شاء الله أتوقع بروف حيدر عنده مداخلة أتوقع الحقيقة أنا في ختام هذه المحاضرة القيمة جدا أحب أقدم شكر وامتناني باسم الشخصي وباسم رئاسة الجامعة التكنولوجية إلى الأخ شكرا جزيلا بروف أنا أشكركم جدا أشكركم على الاستضافة أشكركم على هاي الفرصة الأكثر من رائعة وإن شاء الله إلى الأمام إحنا ما شاء الله العمل بيناتنا مستمر إن شاء الله إن شاء الله الحقيقة وجودك ويانا يغني يغني الجامعة التكنولوجية وأنا مستعد للعمل مع أي باحث مع أي دكتور عندكم بالجامعة 
priority given to all Iraqis researchers. هذا هو أحد أهدافنا اليوم من تعريفك وطرحك إلى كل منتسبي جامعة التكنولوجيا سواء من طلبة أو تدريسيين هو تعرفهم على جنابك تعرف على الجوانب البحثية على مركز البحوث اللي تديره جنابك وبالتالي إمكانية العمل مفتوحة مع مع الجميع إن شاء الله أيضا نحن أي تدريسي أو باحث من طلبة دراسات من تدريسي يحب يتواصل مع دكتور فراس عن طريق مكتب مساعد علمي يحب يسوي ريسيرش احنا مستعدين للتعاون بحيث نفتح له افاق التعاون مع الدكتور فراس والجروب الخاص بمركز بحوث طاقه متجدده للدكتور فراس شكرا جزيلا دكتور ونتواصل احنا ان شاء الله متواصلين متواصلين والشكر الجزيل مره اخرى لحضرتك الدكتور امجد الكل الحضور ونتمنى لكم رمضان كريم مبارك وكل عام وانتم بالف الف خير تحياتي وسلامي للجميع شكرا جزيلا السلام عليكم السلام عليكم في امان الله